Jackson is a supporter of yours, Mr. Yang. He yes. has a question about your... <laughs> He has a question about the freedom dividend. Go ahead, David. You'll be doing things you don't like doing in order to go on living. That is to go on doing things you don't like doing, which is stupid. Better to have a short life that is full of what you like doing than a long life spent in a miserable way. Hey. Yes. So Andrew Yang finally had his CNN town hall like the other um, uh, presidential nominees. Um, and this one was uh, great. I, I thought he did very, very, very good. And on top of him doing very good, I thought that the questions were super um, well thought out. And they did well with these questions. Sometimes I feel like they're throwing softball to some of the candidates. And sometimes I feel like they, they, they're asking just the wrong questions because of their biases. Just, there's a lot of issues I have with these town halls with all of the different candidates. But I watched the full one. The link is going to be in the comment section below. Please click it and go watch it. I thought they did phenomenal. But there's a couple of things I want to uh, um, uh, focus on. And Obviously, everyone, what everyone knows about Andrew Yang, he's want, he wants the UBI, the Universal Basic Income, which would be $1,000 per um, for every single citizen 18 and above um, here in the United States. And I think that's as bare bones as you can, but I do want to do um, tell you exactly what how he describes what the UBI is before we go into a couple of the questions that were asked at the town hall about it, because it's super important. We're still trying to get to know who Andrew Yang is. For the other uh, uh, candidates, we at least know a little bit about them. Even even if it's just Pete Buttigieg, who was a mayor for a couple of years, right? But Bernie, we have history. We know where he's voting. For Kamala Harris, all of these, Elizabeth Warren, we have substantive things about these candidates that we could actually look at and uh, evaluate. But with Andrew Yang, we really needed to know what he's all about. And he answered these questions great. Just like really, 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 really good, to the point, efficient, succinct. Let me just tell you, okay. What the UBI is, uh, um, from his words, and this is from his website. Universal Basic Income, or UBI, is a form of social security that guarantees a certain amount of money to every citizen within a given governed um, population without having to pass a test or fulfill a work requirement. Every Universal Basic Income plan um, can be different in terms of amount or design. The UBI he is proposing for the United States is set of a guaranteed payments of $1,000 per month or $12,000 per year to all U.S. citizens uh, over the age of 18. This is great, right? And it's the UBI, Universal Basic Income, but he likes to call it um, the Freedom Dividend, right? Um, and, and that's what they, they'll be using in these clips that we when we watch moving forward. David Hahn, he is a lawyer working for the Department of Veterans Affairs and is a supporter of yours, Mr. Yang. He yes. has a question about your... <laughs> He has a question about the freedom dividend. Go ahead, David. All right. Andrew, when you speak about the cost of basic income, you've indicated that the freedom dividend would be opt-in or otherwise offset by savings from current spending on entitlement programs. What is your message for veterans, disabled persons, and families receiving TANF benefits, specifically with the concern that they might benefit less from the freedom dividend than other Americans would? That's a tremendous question. Uh, and the goal is to make an economy that works for everyone, a trickle-up economy from people, families, and communities up. And though the freedom dividend might help certain Americans more than others, depending upon their current benefits programs or enrollments, the goal is to make it so that we don't stop necessarily at the freedom dividend. So if someone's a veteran on disability uh, and we see that those benefits are not sufficient, uh, for example, right now, 22 veterans and soldiers are uh, committing suicide every day which is an incredibly tragic and hor horrifying figure. And that's the kind of thing we need to put massive resources in place to combat. Uh, the freedom dividend does not solve all problems for all people, but hopefully it will move us in the right direction. So, so he says right there that um, the freedom dividend is not gonna solve all your problems and it is going to go to these um, people. Um, but I don't think he was uh, clear enough about how he's going to uh, siphon the payments for people who are already receiving welfare, who are already receiving assistance from the government, right? So I went again on his website, and this is when you go to the UBI and check it out, this is how he states it will be passed along to pay, to people, the uh, citizens of this country who are already getting some help from the government. We currently spend between 500 and 600 billion dollars a year on welfare programs, food stamps, disability, and the like. The, this reduces the cost of UBI because people already receiving benefits would have a choice, but would be ineligible to receive the full $1,000 in addition to the current benefit. So if you are already receiving welfare or assistance from the government, you cannot, 
you are ineligible to receive the full $1,000, right? Um, and, and I don't know how I feel about this, right? Because if, if you're looking at the full population, those are the people who would need it the most, correct? Those people who are on disability, the people who are receiving food stamps, they will have a choice, um, the the sign-up choice. They, they will have the option to say, I would like the 1000 versus the food stamps, versus my disability check, versus this, versus that. Um, or you can um, get some, you you won't get the full thousand, you'll get 500, you'll get 300, you'll get, depending on how however much the other welfare uh, combined is. Um, but you will have those options, but I don't know how I feel about this because of the next follow-up question. And the next follow-up question is, like the only follow-up question you can ask and CNN did a wonderful job doing so here. Um, yes, so you're saying that these pe uh, people who are already receiving assistance can't get the full 1000 but this $1,000, like you said, Andrew Yang, is going to every single citizen, including Mark Zuckerberg, including Elon Musk, including Will Smith and these multi-hundred millionaires, billionaires, million, all of these one percenters are going to be getting the extra 1000 bucks. Is this necessary? So let me ask you, if you are proposing to give every single American adult $1,000 a month, $12,000 a year after they turn 18, that would include people like Mark Zuckerberg, Bill Gates, Warren Buffett. Why do billionaires need the freedom dividend? Well, if you look at what's going on in our country right now, there's one state that has a dividend of between one and $2,000 per year, and that state is Alaska where it's universal, it's funded by a petroleum fund. And so in Alaska, they don't go around saying, hey, are you rich? Then you don't get it. If you're doing worse, then maybe we'll give it to you. And the benefits are enormous because then all Americans can get excited about it as a right of citizenship. You don't have any stigma attached to it. You don't need to frame it as a rich to poor transfer. And you don't need to monitor everyone's income in any given moment in time. So there are massive benefits to making it universal. And in Alaska, it has stood the test of time for almost four decades under multiple administrations where now it's wildly popular, has created thousands of jobs, has improved children's health, and has helped decrease income inequality. So what they're doing in Alaska with oil, we can do for the rest of the country with technology. But so you heard him right there. Um, he compares it to what's going on in Alaska. And I think that's great. And to be honest, before Andrew Yang, I had no idea that Alaskan citizens received the dividend. Um, and of course it's popular and it's been popular. That's a really good thing. You have oil in Alaska, people are drilling into your ground, into your um, state to get oil so that these huge corporations can make money. Of course you should get a dividend for them destroying the land in which you live in. Um, and, and this is just how he uses, um, he says, if the way it's great for marketing to the American people. And I, and I know that sounds real shallow because it's a better and it's easier to get past if everyone gets it, so not just the poor or those who need it. But I also think it's super helpful because if you do say that this is the cap and anyone making over this much can't get it, right there is easy. It makes it too easy um, for the Republicans to come back and say, get these people to get up on their own bootstraps and whatever the hell they say, right? So yes, it is. it sounds like a shallow reason, but I think it's a very, very important reason. And it, it, I don't want to put it in the framework of as marketing, but giving everyone, this is just a base of being a citizen here in America, you get this thousand dollars a month because the future doesn't look too great when it comes to automotion, uh, uh, automation, right? Because all of these robots are going to be taking the massive, massive jobs, especially from the middle class. Yes, these multi-millionaires, these billionaires, these hedge fund managers, all of these one percent, they don't need, they don't need it. But if you tell them they can't get it, and it's only going to specific people, um, that becomes an issue. Um, and, I, and I think I agree with him. I definitely need to think about this some more. I want you guys to let me know in the comment section below, how do you feel about that specific answer? Everyone getting the thousand dollars versus just those who need it the most. And last but not least, the question they ask about every, to, to every progressive for every policy position they ever have in the history of the world is, how are you going to pay for this? They don't ask about the wars. They don't ask about the bailouts. They don't ask about the, the tax cuts to the rich. They don't ask about any of these questions when Republicans have, no, never. Don't even question them. Why ask how they're gonna pay for it? Because Republicans say they love to lower the deficit, right? They, they love to say they like small government, but in every way, shape or form, they love to spend, 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 and they like to spend only on the rich and the wealthy and none for the middle class. But, 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 
It is a really important question because this is a radical policy. This would be life changing, game changing. This would change the, the trajectory of the United States of America. I think it's a fabulous idea. I think it's wonderful to have this as a goal. But how are you going to pay for it? Um, CNN does. Uh, they they do ask Andrew Yang and listen to his answer. How are you going to pay for this? Well, if you think about who are going to be the biggest winners from AI to the first question or new technologies or self-driving cars and trucks, it's going to be Amazon, Google, Facebook, Uber, the biggest tech companies in our country. And we all saw, how much did Amazon pay in federal taxes last year? Yeah. They paid less in federal tax taxes than you all. So when people ask, how are we going to fund this? We have to go where the money is. We have to implement a new mechanism to get that money back from Jeff Bezos and Amazon and bring it back to the American people to build a trickle-up economy. Isn't it going to, though, trickle down to the consumer? The price of that is going to trickle down to the consumer, right? Well, the great thing is I speak to CEOs about this, um, and they know it's better for their companies if consumers have money to spend. This is capitalism where income doesn't start at zero. And if you can imagine, if you're watching this at home, imagine your life, your family, your community with everyone getting $1,000 a month. Are you going to buy more stuff? Yes. Are you going to go out more often? Yes. Are you going to get those car repairs you've been putting off? Yes. And all of that money ends up circulating back through the economy, creating jobs in your community where you live. Patrick Litke. Yeah, so he's definitely answered that question a million times before, and he answers it, uh, uh, like I said, super, he's so efficient. He does not, there's no fat. He cuts all the fat and answers the question right where you need to answer the question. Amazon paid zero dollars in taxes last year. Zero dollars in taxes. Mul billions of dollars in profits. Um, um, uh, Jeff Bezos is making hundreds of million dollars a day and Amazon, as a company, paid zero dollars in taxes. He's saying, if we can fix that issue, we don't need to worry about how who, who, how are we gonna get this thousand dollars for each American citizen. It will find its way. These ultra billion dollar humongo um, tech companies are making a fortune and paying zero back into the economy. So um, that's how we're going to pay for it. But I also wanted to add, um, again, from his website, um, when uh, for the specific question, how are you gonna pay for UBI? Um, he it states. We currently spend over $1 trillion on healthcare, incarceration, homelessness, services, and the like. We would save $100 to $200 billion as people would take better care of themselves and avoid the emergency room, jail, and the street, um, and would generally be more functional. But universal basic income would pay for itself by helping people avoid our institutions, which is when our costs shoot up. Some studies sh uh, have shown that $1 to a poor parent will result in as much as $7 in cost savings and economic growth um i love it i love that answer um that answer i think is uh, I, uh, makes more sense to me um than uh, the actual getting the money from amazon because th that that can go a million different ways right how are you going to stop them from having these offshore accounts that takes a million different policies to fix the issue of getting the money from amazon getting the money from um facebook from all of these tech companies right um of course, we most definitely should go ahead and change that. That's most important. But it is true, right? It is true. The reason people end up in jail, the reason people go to the emergency room um, is because they don't have enough money to pay for health insurance. So they end up going to the emergency room only at the end when they definitely need the hospital, when they've lost the leg or they can't move or they're too sick for whatever. And that costs us, the taxpayer, the institution, millions and millions of dollars versus having them have enough money to pay for insurance and going to their doctors and the hospitals on the day to day so it doesn't get to that point. The reason people go to jail is because they end up robbing and stealing and doing, getting themselves into bad situations because they don't have the money to support their family, right? So keeping people out of these institutions will save us in the long haul. Preventative care, the preventative measures is the best measure. That's the way forward. I like that answer a lot more. It is on his website. I'll leave it in the link in the comment section below. Um, I love this. I love the, the CNN town hall. Again, you guys should watch the whole thing. But those were all of the questions and the answers for UBI specific, which is Andrew Yang's big um, claim to fame, big reason he's running for office.